Thank you for uh, coming to another edition of Interruptions. I'm your host, Otis Smith. Today, I got another treat for you guys. Uh, I found this man uh, for the first time. I saw him on one of the iconic TV shows of all time, The Wire, playing Brother uh, Muzum. He's a brilliant actor. He also uh, has uh, some stage presence. Uh, he's been in the uh, musical um, The Book of Mormons. He's also uh, played Slow Drag in another iconic film, Ma Rainey uh, Black uh, Bottom. Uh, this is just a tactician of an actor. Very brilliant man. I'm talking no other than the fabulous Michael Potts. How you doing, sir? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show, blessing us with your presence. Uh, we don't take it uh, likely, you know, you could be doing anything. So I, I appreciate your time. I'm glad to be with you. My first question is, because um, I'm always interested in, in actors and how they got into acting. And so how, how did acting find you? Like, did you, did it find you or did you find it? Um, um, I guess it, found me and I, and, okay. and, and I kind of accepted it. I mean, it started, you know, you always did things in school. Mm -hmm. you, did, you did little drama uh, production right. in school and also in, 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 in church. So I was always doing that, but didn't take it seriously as a career until maybe high school when I, uh, a uh, local acting teacher saw me and asked me to okay. come to the studio. Okay. And so I started working with her and she sort of, she sort of, planted that seed about doing it as a career. Um, and, uh, but I wasn't, I was, you know, I thought I was gonna be a doctor at the time and, and that made my, my mother very happy, of course. <laughs> she she's, gonna, she's gonna get a doctor out of this. And I remember going, to, I went to undergrad okay. to the pre-med. Okay. Because I was gonna be this, this cardiologist. Oh. And started getting sidetracked. There was still this pull Okay. Uh, to perform, so I ended up doing little productions in undergrad, and running into other professors <laughs> <laughs> who encouraged me to take this a bit more seriously as a career. So that that's pretty much how it happened. And then uh, uh, I remember watching a Tony broadcast. Okay. Um, and it was the year that Fences. Uh, okay. Was for Tony, and I remember. Okay. Seeing, and back then they used to do little little excerpts from the play mm -hmm. and there was a great scene uh with J the the james earl jones, legend, james earl jones oh, yeah. and, and courtney vance and i remember hearing that language and going oh my goodness i know these people this is this is how my family sounds this is how we how we talk okay and i remember watching courtney vance and saying where did he go to school where did he learn how to do that and so okay. that's when it started that is a, you know, when I saw the movie and then I came back because I didn't know it was a, it had been a play first. And right. then I, I was online and I saw the great James Earl Jones playing that role, you know, oh, and, yeah. I was, and I was like, wow, because he's always wow. been a, br a brilliant um, actor to me. And the first time I saw him was uh, he played the uh, Jack, Jack Dempsey story. Uh, uh Jack Johnson. Box, Jack Johnson, I meant Jack Johnson. The great, boxer. Yeah, great white hope. Great white yeah. hope. I remember yeah. that too. I yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was so let me ask you this. So how did how did um and I'll give you some context on this question? How did you find the theater and why theater? And the reason I, I'm asking that question is because you see some people that 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 are in your industry, you know, took acting classes, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I've had the pleasure, and you fall in that category, to be able to interview some actors that have that theater background. And right. you guys are a little bit different than <laughs> actors that just took acting class. I'm not, I'm not diminishing the acting classes. I'm, I'm saying you guys, like a couple of actors have told me that you can tell a theater actor even when they show up on the set. It's it's just something. I guess you're training your background that right. allows you to do different things that than someone who just went even with, even if it's a good acting school or acting coach. Um, it's just that theater background makes you guys a little bit different. So that's why my question was, how did you find the theater and why did you choose to pursue doing and, and you still do do theater. 
Uh, well, usually theater is, is, is kind of the, the easy way. It, it, it really, I think a lot of these people, uh, movie stars and TV stars that you mm -hmm. see, of course, begin in theater because that's how you're training. You're always on stage and even when you go to train mm -hmm. and there weren't, when I was coming along or I didn't know of mm -hmm. schools that strictly taught sort of camera technique or were okay. preparing you okay. to go uh, and work in film and TV. And so you go and you start, you know, I, as I said, I looked at Courtney Vance where did he go to school and mm -hmm. I found out it was Yale School of Drama and I decided to, to, to go there. And that was a school that was training you to be in theater. Okay. So they were training theater technique. And during those, during those years, they weren't offering anything about camera technique. Basically, our acting teacher was saying, the, the technique you're learning, you can use in anything. It's not oh. just for the stage. Okay. But they were okay. principally concerned with uh, making you a great stage actor okay. to begin like that. And so you were learning basic technique to work on the stage. And usually what happens, you do a play. A lot of these uh, people from television and film, directors mm -hmm. and producers, they go to the theater too. They're looking for, and casting directors especially. Sure. They're looking for, you know, new talent or new faces. And so they okay. come to the theater and they find you, <laughs> you okay. know, and, and, your agent, and your agents because they want to make money and that pays, that film and TV pays more. Pay so more money. <laughs> So they send you out to audition for that. And, and that's kind of how it happens. I mean, there are actors who, who then I knew classmates and schoolmates who left Yale and then just moved to LA to concentrate on getting into film and TV. And okay. so you can do that. You can do that. But I decided, I stayed in New York and decided theater because uh, when I was growing up, I just didn't see me on screen. I didn't see anybody who looked like me. You know, when I was a little kid, I was sitting Portier was the guy. I said, okay, right. here's a dark yeah. black man. Here's a dark black man, but I don't look like Sidney Poitier. <laughs> hey, I'm you know? always championing my black, my dark skin brothers yeah. like myself. Yeah, and I love that. And, but he was one of very few dark skinned black men yeah. that I used to see in television and movies. And so I never thought initially, I didn't, I didn't think I'd be working in television and film. And I okay. felt that theater, uh, because I'm a character actor, I thought theater was the place to go because it would allow me to 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 work and show the range of my ability and it wouldn't just be about what i looked like okay uh, right uh i could actually be an actor there it was my thinking it's just yeah when i when i you know had had a chance to your, uh, yourself jay bernard uh scott bryce um mm -hmm. Uh, what's what's the uh, Erica Gimple who played Coco on Fame? You know, yeah. everybody has this uh, uh, Patrick M Malone from a different world. Everybody has this theater background, and it's, yeah. it's it's amazing to me because when when I discover you guys as a fan of you know whatever show I'm watching, right? It's amazing that when when I talk to you guys and then see the 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 like you're so different, you know, from the characters you play, but some kind of yeah. way you, you was able to go into that thing, you, 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 you know, and, 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 and every uh, trait, every uh, you guys have is that theater, um, you know, background. So it's just amazing to me, you know, when I, when I, when I talk to you guys uh, with that theater background and, 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 and acting. So I, I wanted to get your, um, you know, your take of what theater was for you um yeah. what does for you what does acting mean and feel like for you it it feels in many ways people call it an escape a, a, a release it, it i always liken it to when you're a kid I and mean, kids pretend they make believe and they step into these worlds uh that they create out of their imaginations and it feels fantastic okay it is, it is um sort of reaching for something outside yourself, beyond yourself. We always say, you know, <laughs> imagine the world you want to be in and make it happen. Okay. So theater feels like that to me. It feels like, and it feels like art, you know, the mirror up to nature, you want to reflect human behavior, human circumstances. Where humans need, you know, we're storytellers. We like stories and black people, especially. Black yeah. people tell stories. We yes. love 
the storytelling, uh, the oral tradition is very, very strong in, in our culture. And I grew up around that. And, 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 you know, I think that stayed with me. And I like being able to step into these different sort of uh, realities. Um, I like the uh, the challenge of doing that because somebody I don't know writes something and then I have to figure out how to make this thing happen. Okay. Uh, how do I develop this character from, you know, the clues, the things that, you know, so it becomes a sort of puzzle and a mystery sort of, okay. sort of thing to do. And I find that very, very exciting and very attractive. Oh, wow. I, I like the way you, 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 you explained that, you know, as far as being able to take what's on a page and then make make this character live breathe right. Right. And yeah. yeah yeah that's a that's that's for you how was it working with viola davis denzel washington um uh chat with bowman but not only as far as like how was it for you working but i mean from a perspective is how was it for you working with these actors and then for them to see the artistry that you bring to the table because you're one of those guys like you don't come to the set just i mean yeah you may say yeah, i'm working with denzel i'm working with viola or chad but i but, think i lost you oh can, can you hear me oh yep you did and my volume went down my volume yeah my volume went down Okay. No, I, I was saying when I asked that question, far as how was it for you working with these actors? I mean, it from a perspective of you working with these actors, but they can uh, see the artistry that you bring to the table, where they can say, "Man, Mike, man, Mike bringing, I got to step my game up, man. Mike bringing that, ooh, Mike." Ooh. <laughs> see, and, but that was my thinking when I stepped on set with them. I mean, everyone, <laughs> everyone knows. <laughs> how amazing these other people are. Uh -huh. So in my mind, I was the one who had to step my game up because I'm going to be with Viola. Denzel is producing it, you know, work with Denzel on stage the year before. Correct. And so, yeah, it's like, I better step, I have to step it up. And, and but at the same time, do my thing. Um, and what was great, it just, there was, you know, you have this impression of, of movie stars which they are sure. huge stars chad and all and and denzel and viola and glenn turman um but you get on set and there was absolutely no ego i think maybe august wilson has that effect on a lot of he humbles everybody right right <laughs> right so, and everyone has so much respect and reverence for for what he's written for what he's given to mm -hmm. black people and certainly for black actors, because these kind of roles are not written often or produced often, and Correct. we don't get to play people who are authentically, authentically black as often. And I think that's what it was. There was so much respect for that and wanting to tell the story. And I think once we all got on set, we read together that mm -hmm. first day and we went around the table and we realized, okay, everybody's, everybody's on, their, on their game. Everybody's okay. ready to do it. And so there was immediate trust. Okay. And so it was like you on, you know, on set. I was like my sister on set, and everybody else like my cousin. And a couple of days in, you know, we just like cracking jokes on each other. <laughs> yeah, I do. Because what was funny for me, you guys' character, as far as the the band, right? Yeah. When when, when you guys would look at uh, uh, Chad with Bozeman character, it was almost like you guys were the uh, kind of liking to me when I grew up. Like y'all were the like the the uncles. And oh, yeah. his Absolutely. character yeah. has an idea of how things in life should be. And right. it's almost like y'all laughing at him like, man, this fool don't even know. He's he going to have to live a little bit longer because he don't. Exactly. He, <laughs> he needs to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going to happen the way he thinks. We get it. We get you, young brother. We understand. But you know that stuff you you got to learn first. You get, and that's the and I always tell my daughters that's the problem with being young. For yeah. some reason, you think you didn't figure something out that the people before you never thought yeah. or figured out. You for some reason right. you think you you the one, like I'm the one that figured this out. And they laughing <laughs> at you like, 
Okay, that fool gonna have to live by another 20, 30 years. He's he gonna have to. He's gonna have to. And he's gonna get a lot of hard knocks. He's gonna hit a lot of walls. A lot of walls. But okay. Okay, young blood. And then you're laughing. That's the funny part. <laughs> you laugh. It's like there's no need to argue because I understand and I'm gonna waste yeah. my time arguing with this fool. I'm just gonna laugh and just laugh. Yeah. He gonna find yeah. out. He gonna find he gonna, out. Exactly. He gonna find out. <laughs> he gonna find out. You guys did a great job of uh, portraying that. Portraying that. Your style of acting, all honestly, Mister Potts, reminds me of this guy right here. Your, <laughs> your style. Yeah, I had. You know, I had to pull it out. I had to. Pull, I had to pull. It out. <laughs> and the reason re, reason I say your your style of acting reminds me of this character is because it's intentional. Mm -hmm. Your 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 like brother was like the, the reason I love this scene so much is because it's after you shot him with a warning shot, right? And your line was, "You must be thinking now, what is it I have to do?" <laughs> <laughs> to make this man <laughs> this next this next when I pull this trigger the second time it, you know you know that your your demeanor the way you you, you played that character your you had some classic I think everyone loves you in that character so good because you know it's something I asked Michael the comedian Michael call you once was and I didn't even have this as a question for you, but I'll, I'll ask you to get your thoughts. How is it for you playing a character that, you know, like you're not the main character, but you have a scene or certain scenes, right? And how do you come in and then you got to own that space, that time frame that you have, you got to come in and then just own it. Well, that's it. It goes back to the earlier question. That's theater training. I've been, say, we, say what we, I'm we, saying? <laughs> We use the word intention and, and the technique we learned is about objectives and playing actions. Okay. So it's what you, you, you look at a scene and you go, okay, what do I want? Who do I want it from? And then what actions do I need to play on this other person to kind of get what I want? Okay. So you walk, I walk into that scene and I want Mr. Cheese, I want yeah. Cheese to understand that he cannot sling on this territory. No, you can't. Yeah, um, just Bart, you, that's not going to happen um, because you're going to end up dead. <laughs> so <laughs> the intention is I want him to understand or to go back to his boss and let him know that this is not your territory and that you're going to lose your life if you continue. <laughs> and you and you had the and same... It. Your eyes were the same as, um, oh, I, I, oh, um, I cannot think of her name right now. I'm so sorry, but an actress, uh, she played in Clockers, um, played played the mother in Clockers. Um, Ooh, I'm trying to remember who was that. She was the mother who child, you know, was trying to keep her child. She was going at uh, Mikael Pfeiffer's character because she right. was. Like, I can't think of her name, but far as the, your eyes, the intensity uh, of your eyes, because and you did it with everyone. Like one of my other favorite scenes when you when you played this character, when you when you walked in the barber shop with Boxster, and and you and you let him know, say your word is what got you here, right? right. And your word is because he was like he was like, well, how can I make this right? You know how much? And you're like, I don't want your money. He's like, your word is what got you here, and your word is why you still have a connection to New York, but without it, you're done. And it wasn't, it was, yeah. it was the look that you gave everybody. The only it's so funny though, because it also classic. The only person really didn't fear you in this show was Michael Williams character. I know. Oh my, you oh my. <laughs> Even the other badass. Because <laughs> that gut that you with you two in the alley and you was you yeah. you you was like, oh no, nah, you're gonna miss me from that distance. And he and he was like, miss you. Even if I miss you, I can't miss you. Like 
I said, man, if you had them two at that on the same page, like far working together, man, everybody be dead. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. And pretty everybody much. Everybody be so you like you said that theater background, and I just uh, you 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 own the character. You 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 also remind me of Viola Davis in the sense of, and I, I heard you in another interview talk about this, far as uh with, with the theater background but the camera can capture what you're thinking almost like Absolutely. uh Absolutely. so you you could you could when, when you guys killed string of bell you said nothing you didn't even have a line now 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 omar had one line but stringer mm -hmm. was doing all the talking right and but your look you know, you was letting us know and to let him know, like, you're not getting out of this one, brother. That's right. you, you're dying today, it's, believe it's, me. It's, that. it's about playing that action. It's about playing that action. I want, I want you to know you're dead. <laughs> you're dead today. I, I don't There's know if he's gonna kill you, but I'm gonna kill you. And this yeah, you're, you're that's, dead. And the first time I ever paid attention to that, when I said you remind me of Violet Day, when Violet Days was in the Antoine Fisher story. And oh, she yeah. she's um, you know just you could look at her and read her body language that her child has come back she she's not happy with what she did as far as giving him up and the guilt right. the regret oh, you could just see it on her face and i and i sat back and with you same i just marvel i'm like man wow how do you do that as far as no lines but my face will convey everything that you need to know yeah it is. I mean, that's that's the scary thing about the camera because it will catch it will catch it all, which is even more important. Why why that theater training was 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 so spot on and so important because you know that you have to have that as the word you use intention. You have to have that thought so the camera can read it. Gotcha. Now my my next question for you. I think a lot of people miss this with actors and they missed it with you but I'm, I'm, finna, I'm about to bring it up here do you think people miss acting actors from the vocal side because you do not sound like brother Muzan nah. <laughs> <laughs> your natural voice is yeah. not the same voice the first time I because what I try to do prepare the interview I try to watch other interviews you've right. done because I'm tr not trying to have the same conversation and I said hello wait a minute <laughs> can you speak to that also far as creating a a, a a character the acting job that sometimes you you don't want to use necessarily your own voice well you try to you it's 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 all about the technique of of creating the character you have the thing on the page mm -hmm. and you have to read what the what the writer has written and a lot of that i mean the, the, you know I, the scoop about brother most known is he was only supposed to be one episode just the one episode with the one word officer okay but whatever i conveyed for the producers to for david simon they went okay well let's give him more and so the very next scene they give me this aria this this monologue when i shoot cheese and so you have to figure out how this person would speak, you know. And at the time, I lived, you know, I was living in Brooklyn in Bed Stuy, Crown Heights, and okay. and I remember as a kid, uh, the brothers from the Nation of Islam were okay. around. I mean, my stepfather knew one, Shaquem, used to be around the house. Okay. And then you remember looking at uh, uh, little archival uh, tapings of Malcolm X, and you try to get okay. a sense of or even Farrakhan uh -oh. to, uh, to the text. Mm -hmm. And that's that's sort of how Brother Muzdon's voice came. Like he didn't have to raise his voice. He had mm -mm. to be very clear, uh, uh, very articulate about what he's saying so that you don't understand. And also because these are the, these are the towers, this is the hood. <laughs> and so, when you meet someone who speaks that way, you're going to pay attention because you're either going to laugh <laughs> or you're going to know that they're deadly serious. You were deadly serious. I, and, my... and I know people have that fear of the Nation of Islam when these brothers present themselves. It's an intimidating, you know, it's a very, very intimidating image. And so the voice becomes a part of that. 
creating that intimidation. You, man, you did such an awesome job. And my, it, my, 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 my last thing on Brother Was On that you did that I think a lot of people missed, but because Brother was so intelligent, like you said, intelligent, speaks right. well enunciate. <laughs> you show up, you and, you and your, your bodyguard, you show up and they didn't tore the towers down. And yeah. you started laughing. <laughs> and he was like, what you let? He said, what's going on? And you said, progress. <laughs> and I said, I said, they don't get what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> Gentrification is about to move you guys out of Pretty, here. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it ain't going to be, we going to be warring on this and war. No, there's, there's a bigger play that y'all not understanding. <laughs> Exactly. That mm-hmm. brother was on, that missing. brother that brother knew and brother and you was like progress. That train, <laughs> that train of progress is, yeah. is, yeah. is coming. Uh now the only thing before I ask uh, my final two questions, the only thing I didn't like, I just didn't like how they killed Omar. I was like, you know, doggo well, Omar ain't get, gonna get I said they couldn't figure out how to kill Omar. That's what happened. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no way in the world Omar walked to the store and got shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think they figured that out. I mean, he just became so larger than life. And I remember Michael mm-hmm. uh, Kenneth Williams talked about that. The character was only supposed to be six episodes or something like that. He was only supposed to be in that first season, but because of what he had created, they just kept writing more and more for him. And um, and he got deep into the story. You know, Michael. Yeah, you know, and I I'm like that too. I want to know what the story is, not just what my character's doing, but, but what is the story? overall story and that that that's authentic. And and he just became such a larger than life character that I know that was disappointing for a lot of people. Yeah, well, because the show was so brilliantly written from one the only one that threw us off, but 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 that's because we didn't know how they was weaving the show was was season two. The season yeah. two kind of threw you're like, what are we doing on the docks? What's going you know, but not understanding is with the docks, right. you're meeting the connect. They introducing the connect and and then when they bring it back, they weave in the kids and how you know broken home they, they're tying all this how all this well, yeah. affects the a- community. Yeah, David Simon had a five-year storyline for it. it that was, was all a part of the storyline. I've never been. seen nobody do that before. I've never well, seen. Yeah, he started that whole thing. I mean, I remember he had to beg, he got pretty much beg HBO every year to keep re-upping the show because, you know, the ratings weren't great. People weren't, <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't, it became a huge hit after it was off. Yeah, I, yeah because I, I and I, the reason I know you're right is because I was watching it. And when I got to uh, when I got to season three, because I, I I watched it for season one, two, but when I got to mm-hmm. season three, that's when it was kind of like you telling everybody like, "Hey man, listen, the wire it's not what you think. Like you got to watch yeah. it." And you would tell people, "Hey man, go watch season one." I say season two gonna throw you off a little bit. Don't worry about that though. And then, like you said, it started to catch fire. But you right. correct. It wasn't like that in the beginning, and I got into it because I recognized certain faces from uh, Oz, uh, right? And so right. from from Oz, I kind of was just following the the these actors, and so yeah, you did you man, you did a hell of a job on that character. I thank man. you. No, I, I, uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. Still to this day, it's still to this brothers and yeah. like. They come to the show I'm doing now. They don't care the show I'm doing now. They all just want to know, brother was on. <laughs> hey, lo- lo- listen, listen. As long as you ain't get, long as you ain't got that bow, bow tie on and, and <laughs> gun in your hand, I know you, Michael. Now if I if I meet you and you got that bow tie, on, I'm like, nah, baby, let's go. That's not <laughs> who I came to meet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What inspires you? Wow. Um. Oh my goodness. That's a big, that's a wide open question. That's a big, big goes, question. Remember, it goes where you take it. I, I, you know what? I think what I'm so proud of is I love my family. Uh, the people I come from. Like okay. uh, my, 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 you know, my mother's now passed and sure. her siblings and my grandparents mm-hmm. have passed. And, and you know, as, as you get older, I start thinking back 
especially in light of what happened in the summer after the murder of George Floyd, and you start thinking like, oh my God, my mom was born into the Jim Crow South. Yeah. What she did do, or my grandparents, Jim yeah. Crow South. And somehow they never inflicted whatever their traumas were. They were very good at, at covering up, it up because I didn't grow up knowing that that was, that was the thing around me. They were, they took such great care of me and protected me so well. Uh -huh and still kept their, their mind and, and spirit in, in, in check. Okay. Somehow. Wow. And I always think that's pretty extraordinary. And so anytime I become, start feeling ungrateful or think, uh -huh. you know, things are really, really, really bad. I, I, I remember and I'm going, wow, where you guys came from and what you've achieved. Uh, and what you've instilled in me, that's, that inspires me. That kind of thing. Okay. And it's black people, period. <laughs> black people, period. That's inspiring. I thought I was the only one that did that. So I'm glad to hear. I because Ooh, that, That's incredibly inspiring. For, yeah, for my mother to know that she went to school in a time of, of segregation. And I, I was born in 71. So we were, as a race, we were coming out of that. Right, but, right. But, but, but to know that it was her generation that were right. the youth uh, for Dr. King. They were the exactly. youth for him to do, to, and my mother was from Montgomery, Alabama. So, Ooh, okay. yeah, yeah, so, so you know, <laughs> so. I mean, was, my family was South Carolina. But, so same, same thing. It, same. It's, same. So yeah. yeah, and like you said, when you start looking at history and you go back in, in your mind, and you're like, to, to endure that, to, to, yeah. to, to, but to fight because, you know, when I, I love watching, movies uh for that period of time or even dealing with slavery because i think it it needs to challenge us to like you said some not not that it's all gravy today but it's not that that it's was not. something that was something like in your face and there's nothing you can do about it like right. there's nothing right. you to, to to hear back then a white man could do something and no, I will not be convicted in the South. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. that's mind blowing. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I think about that. It's like, wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, and I have an older sister who was, you know, she's 10 years and, and she was part of that too. She was mm -hmm. born during that time. And I remember she's, you know, <laughs> at Thanksgiving, she said, yeah, I never went to an integrated school. <laughs> No. I was like, wow, to yeah. think about that. That's <laughs> like, like, no, never, no, no, I never. She said, I never went to an integrated school. So it's, it's, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I guess personally for me, that, but other things, you know, like great storytelling, sure. great actors, all of sure. that, so many different things. And my real life heroes are all, you know, inspiring. Oh, no problem. My, my final question for you is what gets you through the tough days? Ooh. Ooh, uh, music. <laughs> <laughs> so, what type of music? What's, 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 what's your, what's your, what's your go-to? I keep, I keep um, in my car, Serious Heart and Soul is on. So a lot okay. of old school soul. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, grew up in the church, so a lot of gospel. Gotcha, uh, okay, okay. That keeps me going. Um, and the groove sometimes, a lot of dance music as well. So okay. um, that pretty much. When, when I'm getting like that, I have to listen to some music. I have to find something. <laughs> I, man, I thought, like I said, same here. Like I, yeah. I, my, my go-to is like, like I said, gospel, um, mm -hmm. love R&B, old school R&B. Yeah. And, I, and then I had to, I had to get some jazz, jazz in there. Yeah. Um, my, my, my go-to guys, uh, Joe Sample and um, Najee. Those ah, are, okay. Those, those okay. are yeah, 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 yeah. Those, those are my go-to guys. Yeah, my go. I guess my go-to guy right now is kind of like Gregory Porter because there's okay. Some, some. I love his voice, and I love because uh, he he goes back and forth. You know, he has that very spiritual side. Okay, right. On that jazz side, and you know, on bluesy too. He kind of runs the gamut. Runs the gamut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I thank you for coming on the show, sir, and blessing us with your presence. I love thank to you. have you back on the show. And normally when I bring somebody back on the show, I try to pair them 
with another artist. It, it could be okay. R and it could be R and B, could be jazz, okay. it could be another <laughs> actor. But right, uh, right. And we'll, and of course, we'll find a topic. When I do that, I'll say, "Hey, I w- want to bring you back on the show with so and so," and and I'll kind of list, you know, what the you know the topic is, so you okay. have a have a have an idea. But I'm I'm a big fan, and st- you know, continue to do what you're doing. Stay safe, and please stay continue much blessings. Thank you, thank you, my brother. I greatly appreciate that. And, we, and we love you. Love you. Peace. <laughs>